At a socially challenging point in my life, after my family and I moved to Germany, playing League of Legends was my only hobby. This hobby quickly became an addiction, since it was something that let me escape from the difficulties of reality. The hard part of this big change in my life wasn't leaving everything behind. For some reason, I was excited about starting all over, but I never could have imagined how hard it is to integrate into a new community with literally no connections. My school class, for example, was full of nice people, but they seemed to have already bonded over the years and it felt impossible for me to become one of them. I have never been the center of attention, but struggling to express myself because of the language barrier has definitely pushed me even further away from it. Feeling embarrassed and being unable to communicate was emotionally draining, so whenever I got home, I just wanted to feel something else. I wanted to belong. I wanted to understand and be understood. I wanted to interact with others and I wanted them to appreciate me. But above all, I wanted to forget. Spending countless hours playing League seemed like a convenient way to forget about feeling like an alien, but you know how these things end. Sooner or later you'll have to deal with real life. At some point, I needed to embrace what I really felt and work with that. So one day, I finally stood up and I said... Alright, just one more round. Hi, my name is Zoltan and this is Game Appeal. Normally, on this show we discuss appeal and game design, but today's episode is going to focus more on my relationship towards competitive online multiplayer games. Eventually, my parents took away my computer. Of course, I was mad at them at first, but frankly, I would probably have continued playing League until this day if that hadn't been the case. So thank you, it really got things started for me. Months later, I dropped out of school just before my graduation and sought professional help from a therapist. Things weren't looking great for me, but you know what they say, there is always a valley before a hill. Well, maybe not always, but it's what happened to me. Fast forward a year to the point when I got my new apartment, therapy turned out to be very helpful, I started going to school again, and for the first time in a long time, I felt happy. But also, I was playing League again. I didn't even know why I started playing again, because I was literally constantly happy and as soon as I booted up the game, I became anxious. I panicked over the idea that I would let the addiction take over and drop out of school again. I feared that my life would become a mess and that I would become a disappointment if I continued playing. Yet I did continue. That fear of mine never came true. I realized I was actually in charge of my life now. I wanted to go to art school and I wanted to move out, so I did. With the help of my therapist, my counselor and my loved ones, I managed to design my environment so that I was in the right headspace for making decisions. I carried a lot of responsibility, but I was also free in a sense at the same time. I sat down to reflect on why exactly was I still playing League. I couldn't think of a good reason, so I tried something else. I uninstalled the game and waited for a kind of craving to pop into my head. That way, I thought to myself, I could identify the feeling and analyze it. I could think of alternative methods to satisfy my desire instead of going down the rabbit hole of video game addiction one more time. The craving I was expecting hasn't come for a long time, but then COVID-19 happened. Suddenly I was alone, quarantined in my small apartment. The appeal of League had faded away by then and now I really wanted to play Apex with my friends. This time it wasn't nearly as dangerous for me to play a competitive multiplayer game as before. I was excited to hop on the voice chat and talk and laugh along with friends the whole day every day. It felt so normal because honestly that's what everyone was doing back then. A few months passed and Apex wasn't as much fun anymore. Some of my friends started going to work again, some simply stopped playing 24 hours a day. And that was the point when I finally understood my craving. It was all about friends, about being part of a community that works towards a common goal. 
I enjoyed the gameplay and I enjoyed the art style of the games I believe I was addicted to, but essentially I used them as a medium to fulfill my social needs. And that's not necessarily wrong. In times like these, multiplayer games can be very helpful to maintain our relationships with people while physically distancing ourselves from them in order to stay healthy. But the human brain is programmed to remember successful strategies we use to meet our basic needs and makes them a habit. I will come back to you. I promise. In order to optimize our thinking process, the brain automatizes certain actions so that we are capable of thinking beyond meeting basic needs. In my case, my brain remembered playing League as a successful strategy to socialize because I started playing it with friends. But they actually stopped after about 4 years. After such a long time, my brain was already hardwired with connections between League of Legends and valued social contributions, maybe even a sense of social belonging. So every time I was about to boot up my computer to play League, the mood center of my brain would be swimming in dopamine because firstly, we are talking about a free-to-play game designed to get players hooked and spend their money on skins, but secondly, because my brain thought I was about to do the right thing and socialize. And in a weird way, I believed it too. I actually cared about my teammates who were just randoms. It was important to me that nobody lost their temper during a match so that we could focus on our common goal to achieve victory. Whenever I was upset, I just suppressed what normally makes people rage. But despite the effort, those people could have been bots and it wouldn't have made a difference. It wasn't socializing anymore, it was pretending to socialize. Our brain doesn't only reward us with dopamine, we actually receive a flood of the good stuff beforehand to motivate us to take action. Despite how hungry we are, if it wasn't for the dopamine that makes us grab some food every now and then, we would actually starve to death. It doesn't mean we wouldn't like food, or couldn't enjoy the taste and aroma of food, it's just that we wouldn't care enough to actively do anything to still our hunger. I don't say there is absolutely no correlation between needs, taste, preference and the point at which our motivation spikes, but the dopamine is what makes us do stuff. It's the reason drug addicts, or any kind of addicts for that matter, often describe their situation as the feeling of not being in control of their own body, or as being enslaved to a substance they consume. You can be mindful and dislike bad things all you want, but as soon as the dopamine kicks in, you are much more likely to act irrationally. And let's be honest here, we have all experienced this phenomenon countless times. We are simply so good at rationalizing our own actions, we don't even notice when we are doing it. When we pull out our phone and check for new messages, we think about what we could have missed out on. The moment we recognize something tasty that's bad for us on a billboard, we start thinking about all the reasons why we aren't a treat today. We need a reason for literally everything we do, and if there is none, well, then we think of one. When I say I was addicted to a game, I mean I was lying to myself on a daily basis. I convinced myself so many times that playing League for hours and hours would be something useful, so much that I started prioritizing it above everything else. It became this huge part of my identity that I lost all at once as my computer got taken away. If I were to give advice about how not to turn into somebody like past me, I would say always have a variety of strategies you can apply when dealing with stress. Be mindful about your media consumption. Whenever you try out a new game, note how it makes you feel and what it makes you think about. Whenever you choose to play in your leisure time, acknowledge your emotional state and pick up a type of game that has already proved to benefit you while you were in a similar mood. If nothing seems to work out, try out new stuff, just avoid predominantly dopamine-based solutions. For example, in May, I came across a very special indie game called Kind Words. It's far from being my favorite game and it's not really entertaining at all, but it turned out to be very helpful in situations where I was feeling down. A few weeks ago, I learned about Yashike Media from Screen Therapy. It's a genre designed for people in need of emotional healing. I don't know a lot about how it works, but I'm excited to find out by experiencing its effects on me the next time I feel down and too comfortable to leave the house. So have I stopped playing competitive games altogether, you might ask? 
Well, I think it's too early for me to say they are the past, and that's also not really what I aim for. I think I have finally understood what I gain from competitive multiplayer games and when to play them. As for now, they seem to be too big of a threat to my well-being and kind of a waste of time if I'm being honest. I literally feel better when doing just about anything else. A well-composed atmosphere and skillful storytelling through purposeful game elements have been more appealing to me lately. Mentally challenging single-player games like Hellblade or Hollow Knight are my gem right now and I also find games relieving to finish. I think it's just as important for us to say goodbye and let our favorite ones go as it is to experience them fully. In my opinion, if we distance ourselves from something physically or mentally, we get a better perspective on what impact it has on our lives, making us either appreciate it more or understand our own criticism towards it. As for passively justifying our own actions, I don't think we will ever be able to say goodbye to that one. Listening to our gut feelings, thinking and acting irrationally is a fundamentally human behavior, but we have to acknowledge that behavior as our own and take responsibility for it. I mean, hell, rationalizing decisions is literally what made me do this video. I wasn't satisfied with how I wasted a big chunk of my life on games I don't even like anymore, so I took this story and reinterpreted it in a way that makes me actually grow from my negative decisions instead of merely regretting making them in the first place. Thank you for watching this episode. I know this one was even more personal than the previous ones and I would appreciate some feedback on the format. If you have a different perspective on this topic, I would love to hear from you in the comment section. If you wanted to financially contribute to the production of these videos, you could do that on my Patreon page. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one.